Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to lesson four of the Node.js REST API course. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your day and hopefully all of these lessons haven't been too hard to follow up to this point. Now, in today's video, we are going to discuss a very quick topic about how to refactor some of the code inside of app.js so that everything in here isn't so darn messy. So last video, we created a post request route called user create. There's quite a bit of code in here. We have this function called get connection. And then we also have another route for user again. And further down below, we have this users route. And if you go to your browser with your server up and running, so let me go down here and say nodemon app.js and our server is up. I'm going to refresh this page we are pretty much hitting this user route over there. So quite a bit of code inside of this one single file. And we're going to look at how we can refactor this into a separate file so that it is easier to maintain in terms of our project. And you know, easier to maintain for ourselves and also easier to maintain for a team of developers is something that we always want to achieve inside of our programming projects. So let's go ahead and begin with the process of refactoring some of this code here. So this is quite difficult to explain, but I'll try to walk through this one step at a time. And let me introduce some code right above the user's route. So let's see. Let's see how to start refactoring factoring our code. And uh, let's see, I'll show you how to use something called a router. Now, you probably don't know what a router is, so let me show you right now. And the first thing I will do is to define a new variable called router, so constant router. And this guy will come from my express variable all the way at the top. So this is the express coming from express our library. So const router express. And this guy has a method call on it with a capital R router. And this guy right here will create a brand new router for us. Now, what the heck is the point of a router? Well, the router, you can do something like, uh, let's see, put a get request route on it. And let's say I create a brand new route called messages or whatever you want to call it. We can define a callback of request and also response. Now, I think I need a fat arrow for this. So let's see, fat arrow. And there we go. So console, let's say log and, you know, show some messages or whatever. Wherever you want to print out for that log message is fine. I'm going to end my response with a res end. And now I'm going to save this file of app.js. Now, the next thing I would like to do is to say app.use, and I'll use this router from above, and I'll save one more time. And finally, let me go to my server over here and just say messages, and you'll see that we are logging out the message of this guy on line 74, and then we are ending that response. So that's kind of how you use a router. You can define as many routes as you want. So, you know, get foo and then you know request and response and so on and so forth so that's pretty much how you actually use a router and we're going to use this concept of a router so that we can refactor some of our code away into a different file so let me go ahead and remove that commented line and i'll show you how you can put some of this code for example the user's route into a different file right now so let's first create a new folder inside of our project. Let's call this guy routes. Inside of the routes folder, we will create a new file called user.js. And inside of this new file will contain all of my users routes. So we'll contain all of my users routes or user related routes is probably a better wording for it. So what do I want to do in here? Well, I'm going to define my router inside of this file. So let me quickly either go back to app.js and either copy this code, which might be a better idea. So let me copy this code over here and go to the user.js and I'll just paste that code in there. 
Now inside of this file, I don't have access to express, so let me uh, import it again as a constant. And let's see, require is what we need, and let's just say express. Okay, so express router, and I believe everything looks good to me. And the final line of code is to actually export this router outside of this file somehow. So this might be a little bit confusing, but I'm just going to say module exports equals this router. All right, so everything looks good. And the question now is, what exactly do I want to do with this router that's now being exported? Well, I'm going to save this file, so make sure to hit save. And I'm going to go back to app.js. And let me now remove all this code over here. And instead of defining a brand new router, I'm going to say require. And I'm going to require from the file of routes. And let's see, routes. And we have user.js. And so that's the file that we just created. And so if I hit the save on this file as well, I can refresh this page now, and we will see the exact same log message as we had before. But instead of using that route instead of app.js, we are now using the, let's see, the router instead of user.js. So if I modify this guy to be something like 11111, hit the save, and then I believe if I refresh this over here, you'll see the message of 11111. So that's kind of how we put some new code inside of a separate file. And through the exports equals router, we expose it inside of app.js by requiring it like that. And then the last line that you really have to include is app use router so that this new router is kind of being placed inside of your application. All right, so very long explanation as to how you uh, separate some code into a new file and then expose it in here. And hopefully you can kind of see what I'm going to do next. But uh, basically, I'm going to take this regular old user's router, and I'm going to, or this route, I'm going to put it inside of this router file called user.js. So let's head on over to user.js, and let me paste all that code in there. And that looks pretty good. Make sure you change this app over here to use the router instead. And I believe we are missing this method called get connection. So if I hit save, you'll see everything looks good. If I go back to app.js and check what's happening here, I should be able to say users, and I believe we'll get an error. So users and get connection, that method is not defined. So get connection is actually this over here. So let me just either copy this, or yeah, let me just cut this and remove it from that file. And now I can say, let's see, paste that below. I think I want it to be closer to the left side. So let me just indent this over. And I will hit Save again. And if I refresh this, MySQL is not defined. So MySQL on line 23 is not defined. Why don't we go ahead and import it above? So it doesn't exactly matter where you import this guy. So MySQL equals require. And we'll say MySQL and hit save. And one more time, we refresh. The users route is now giving me all of the users inside of my database, which is probably a list of 10 users right now. Okay, so now that we've successfully kind of imported the users route from app.js, so users used to be somewhere over here, we put that into the user route file over there. Our app.js file is much cleaner, right? So we don't have a lot of code in here that doesn't really belong into app.js. So why don't I go ahead and move the other user-related routes inside of the user.js file as well? So user colon ID. And then let me also copy, let's see, this guy over here. So I'll just cut that. Uh, go to user.js. And let's see, somewhere right over here, probably, I'll paste all of that code. And I don't like the way that it indents all this stuff, so let me just fix this really quickly here. So I believe it's this guy, and uh, maybe it's this over here as well. So I'll get the console, tab that over, and everything looks good to me. Uh, you want to make sure you change the app to actually use the router inside of this file. And we will make this the router as well. So we have user create our post request. 
and then we also have the user colon ID. So let me hit file and save all, which will save app.js and also user.js at the same time. And uh, why don't I remove the empty spaces over there? And let's see, I guess I'll remove that comment because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense anymore. And I will save this file. It'll reload my server. I'll refresh the user's route. And let's see, that looks pretty good. If I try to access the ID of four for Clay Thompson, I can say user slash four, and we'll get Clay Thompson to work over there, which means that our user JS routing is working perfectly. Now the create is also working. So if you go to the form.html, create some kind of user of AAA22212, hit the submit, and then you go back to, let's see, users, you'll see that last user being created all the way at the bottom of the list over there. So that's how you separate your routes into a different file. And everything inside of app.js is much cleaner, right? So you see, you don't have a lot of code that doesn't belong here. Okay, so now that we have our routes stored away inside of a separate file, I would like to now discuss something called connection pooling with our MySQL connection inside of this little bit of code here. So one problem that you will often run into when you're building out a backend server is that when you're trying to access a MySQL database, you often create a connection to you know fetch some data or to insert some data. And whenever you do this too much on a server, the creation of a connection to MySQL will actually fail if you don't have any connections left to your database. So let me show you how to fix this by introducing a connection pool. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is the get connection method over here. I'm going to define something right above it instead. And this guy will be a constant, and you can call this variable pool. And let's see, MySQL, and we'll create a pool instead of a connection over here. And this pool, uh, we will define some configuration parameters very similar to what we have in create connection. So you can see we have host over there showing up. We have user as well. And so let me copy over some of these parameters and paste that directly in there instead of my pool configuration. And over here, let me just tab this back a little bit. The first thing I would like to modify inside of the config is to provide something called a connection limit instead and just use a value of 10 and just hit a comma over there. And instead of the connection returning a brand new connection every time we need one, so for example, when we are creating a new user, we call get connection. This guy creates a brand new connection, and this assumes that we have a connection to create. And so that's not always going to work. So instead of doing this, you can just simply return pool like that. And a pool itself, so pool, you can actually call a query just like what you would do on a regular connection. So returning this guy will just work. And so if I hit the save and hit the, let's see, reload of this guy, I can just reload this as many times as I want and it works perfectly fine. All right, everybody, that is going to wrap it up for today's video on how to refactor some of our code. And the reason why I am refactoring this connection pool is because in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to deploy our application server onto Heroku so that we can access our data in the cloud, not just a simple local server and a local database like what we have right now. So hopefully you look forward to that. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. That's going to be it for today and I will see you in the very, very next lesson. Bye bye everybody.